Are you using a Atomos Ninja or Shogun recorder monitor? Then I think I have great news for you because Atomos actually made their latest OS upgrade to Atom OS 11 compatible with pretty much all of the more or less current devices, like for example, the Ninja 5, as well as the 5 Plus, the Ultra, of course, has that operating system as its default, and the Ninja as well. Now, why is this amazing news? First of all, Atomos decided not to just deprecate their older devices in favor of their newer Atomos Ninja Ultra, for example, and just have us be with what we already had. They're going forward with this technique of actually bringing up older devices onto the same level playing field with their latest operating system. And this is not just a little bit of a firmware upgrade or bug fix. This is actually a complete overhaul of the operating system on the Ninja V as well as all of these other models monitor recorders. They've actually completely revamped the design and the user experience for this monitor recorder operating system. And they're adding in a couple of new features. Most of those new features are behind a paywall, so you actually have to activate them in a similar way that they've did it before with, for example, the extra codex of H.265 and so on. Now, one thing to note on this, however, is that with this operating system upgrade, if you purchase the Atom OS 11 on the My Atomos interface, you actually get an activation which will also include the H.265, which previously was sold separately as a $99 upgrade. And I think that makes it a pretty good deal that you now get more features and you also get this new codec. In this video specifically, I want to actually give you an upgrade guide and how you can actually get your hands on Atomos OS 11 and how you can install it on your Atomos Ninja 5. And I'm pretty sure the same upgrade procedure also works on the Ninja Ultra, as well as the Shogun, and of course, all of the other Ninja and Shogun products. Now to do this upgrade, of course, you need the device that you want to be updating and a media drive. And I recommend as well the power adapter so that you can actually run the device on constant power instead of having a battery plugged into the device that may or may not go empty during the process. The process doesn't take that long, so usually any fully charged battery will be fine, but I like to be a little bit more safe with the actual power to the grid system. Now, I would recommend you actually upgrade the Ninja to the operating system 11 first, and then you check whether or not you actually have any features missing or that you would like to have from the future upgrade of that feature set, which is a purchase in the Atomos interface. Because if you're mostly using this as a monitor recorder and you don't really fancy the EL zone or the RE new false color, and you just want to continue using it as you've been doing, then you most likely don't need that upgrade. And I think that's actually really great news that they're giving you the free upgrade to this latest operating system and the option to purchase the extra features instead of just making the upgrade to the operating system a paid transition already. To go through the process, of course, you have to download the firmware file from the website I will link in the description down below. On this site, you actually will find that there have been multiple updates since they released the Atom OS 11. Some of those updates might be applicable to the device that you have in your hands, like for example, in my case, there have been four or five updates since the Atom OS 11 has been made compatible with the Ninja V. However, there are, for example, much more updates on the Ninja Ultra side. And of course, you want to check the site, which is specifically for the product that you plan on updating. Then you just download that file, which is a zip file. Once that is completely downloaded, you unzip that file and you place the firmware upgrade binary directly into the root directory on that drive that you plan on using for the firmware update. Once that is complete, of course, cleanly eject the drive and then you're ready to go over to your Ninja or Shogun Atomos recorder. Now that you have everything ready, I would disconnect the Atomos from any accessories that it might be connected to, like for example, the Atom X cast. And then you take the battery, you plug that into a constant power source, plug that into the Atomos Ninja, and of course, you can then directly slot the media into the Atomos recorder. If you are doing that with the device already turned on, then the operating system will actually directly ask you if you want to install the firmware that you have on that drive. You can of course just choose yes and go ahead with that step. But if your device is still turned off and you just turn it on with the media already slotted in with the firmware on the media, 
then it will actually just install the update without even asking. That is actually important because if you don't plan on upgrading, then you should also not put the firmware onto the media and just turn on your Atomos recorder with that media and the firmware already in place because it will just update for you. Next, whether you did it with the device already turned on or turning the device on, it will show you the upgrade screen with a loading bar. That basically copies over the operating system directly onto the Atomos and already starts the installation process. Now, once that is finished, your device will actually turn off and then not turn on again. I then actually went ahead and removed the media and then turned on my recorder. However, I probably should have left the media in place. Nevertheless, it still turned on and finished the upgrade. That was the scary part where I was like, did I do something wrong? Did I remove my media too early in the upgrade process? But no, the media was not necessary for that continued upgrade process. That seems to be just an installation process on the first time you turn it on after installing that operating system upgrade. Now, if you find that your Atomos device does not find the firmware upgrade either while it's turned on and you just slot in a media with the firmware upgrade on it, or if you are trying to boot from a media that has the firmware upgrade on it and it doesn't recognize the firmware upgrade, then I would recommend you do two things. One is you have to make sure that you are actually placing the correct file onto the drive. The second thing is that you actually have to make sure that your media is formatted in a way that your Atomos device is actually capable of reading. And the easiest way to actually do this is to turn on your Atomos device and of course insert the media into the bay and then go up to the SSD storage area in the settings and you can also of course go just simply into the settings in any way and then scroll over to the end, almost the end, there's a point that is called media and there you will find a point called format. And when you do the formatting in the Atomos device, then you have a media which is formatted in a way that is understandable for your computer as well as for the Atomos device. And now you can take the media connected with the computer and then place the file into the root directory of that media, eject it again and try the upgrade process one more time. Once your upgrade is finished and everything is done, your device is turned on, you're greeted with these wonderful new operating system design and of course with a bunch of these new features which may or may not need activation. One of the latest firmware updates since the initial release of the operating system 11 actually was also to make sure that if you're accessing any features and functionalities which are not included in the free version of the operating system 11, or if you don't have activation codes ready for specific things, then actually a error message will appear on the screen which is similar to the one that I have experienced. Try to set the settings to H.265 and start recording. The record button actually was grayed out and I still hit the record button and it then showed a message basically telling me that I don't have the activation code installed for that feature. Now you can think whatever you want about having to buy extra activation codes for features or these different codecs. From my understanding, different codecs and functionalities like that are for one, developmentally a process for a company to actually implement onto these devices. And of course, we bought the device with a certain feature set. Now they're adding new features. That is development time and effort that is going into this, as well as buying licensing for certain functionalities, like for example, the licensing for ProRes or ProRes RAW or H.265. I am not sure what kind of licensing might be in that mix and what they might have to pay for. However, I know that these things do exist in the realm of software development as well as codecs for, for example, video processing. The same thing, for example, goes for the NDI licensing. Now, if you want to learn about the new features of Atom OS 11 before actually going ahead and purchasing it, then you can find a video up here linked where I go over a bunch of those features and show them to you. If you're ready to do the upgrade already, then you can also follow along with the process that I am describing in this video. So once you're ready to do the actual upgrade to the new Atom OS, 11 features, you have to go back to the website my.atomos.com and there you can log in, see your registered device with a serial number, and then go ahead and purchase the upgrade. Now, if you've never done any of this before to register your device, you actually have to put your ID into the system so that they basically know which device explicitly is getting that firmware upgrade or that feature set activation code. 
This is something that I find a little bit annoying that you can't just buy the upgrade once or have that upgrade transferable between devices. But from what I understand and how it's set up, basically a upgrade of the software is tied to the hardware ID of the Atomos device that you have in your hands. So to do the activation, you find the ID on your activation page in the Atomos settings, and then you can go ahead with that on the interface. After purchasing the activation code, you can then download an activation file, which is quite similar to a firmware upgrade. You just download that zip file. Once you have that, you extract it, place that file with the .bin extension on your Atomos Ninja media, and then take that media, eject it, of course, and then put it into your Atomos device. And there you will be asked once you turn the device on if you want to install that activation, and it will actually display which features will become available once you have made that installation. In my case, for example, I got the Atom OS 11 features as well as the H265 installation. Everything is ready to go. You have all of the features and access to just about everything that your recorder and monitor can do. Of course, some of those features are still kind of limited because you also need additional hardware for them to work, like for example, the Atomos Connect device, which I'm also looking to basically test out and see how that will perform and what kind of features that will give. Now, with all that said, I hope your Atomos device is now upgraded to Atom OS 11 and you're enjoying the new interface and maybe even all of the new features like the H.265 recording and much more. If you have any questions, you can of course leave those in the comment section down below. And if you want to have a bit of a conversation about these things, you can join my Telegram group, which will be linked in the description down below as well. Now with all that said, I hope you have a nice day, enjoy your operating system upgrade, and I will see you in another video. Ciao, ciao!